Good morning, everybody. Sarah, Thrifting for the Nest. It is Monday morning, July 3rd, so happy 4th of July, a day early. I um, thought I would do a weekend sales video because I have not done one in a while. Um, and I want to just stipulate something real quick. So I do my sales videos when I do them and I'm sharing this information with you, it's not to be boastful. I feel like sometimes it can come across as me bragging about my eBay sales, but I want to be very clear that it's because I want, if I'm going to share with you my hauls and things that I'm picking up at the Goodwill outlets, um, and I'm saying in those videos, this is what I think this item is going to sell for. I like to do the sales videos actually showing you what I sold items for so that you know what kind of profit there actually is to be made because like I said in my last haul video I can tell you from experience what I think an item is going to sell for and that's how I base my decision on whether or not to source it but sometimes it doesn't sell for what I think it's going to sell for and um, a lot of times too because I'm always leaving margin for running sales in my store and for accepting best offer oftentimes things sell for less than I put it up for but that's just the eBay business so I'm sharing this information for you with you to be helpful and not to be boastful um, because honestly I did not believe anybody who was selling on eBay when they told me what kind of item, what kind of money they could get for used clothing. So um, I make these videos to help the reselling community um, because I learned a ton once I started watching YouTube videos from resellers. And so I feel like from the beginning of the year when I started doing this YouTube channel, my purpose was to share knowledge with people. I don't know everything. I'm still learning. eBay changes all the time, but my sole purpose of what I'm doing here is to share with resellers because I know that I gleaned a ton of information and it really helped build my business when I started watching other resellers on YouTube. So that's my disclaimer there. I'm not bragging about what I'm selling items for. I'm stating information so you can take with that, take that with what, for what you will, um, when growing your own eBay business. So let's get to it. So uh, I had a very consistent weekend of sales. I've actually had a very consistent like 10 days, which is awesome. The dips, the ups and downs in my eBay store make me crazy. I have been consistently listing about 10 items a day this last week. So I think that consistency says a lot. So I'd love to get my sales numbers up, but you know what? I'm not gonna complain about the, the numbers that I've been pulling the last, um, few days. So I'm pretty happy with this. If it stayed like this forever, I would continue doing what I'm doing, um, which I always intend on doing. <laughs> so anyways, so Friday, I'm looking at my sales grid right now. Friday, I did $245 in sales. Saturday, I did $271. And Sunday, I did $249. So super consistent around the $250 mark um, every day this weekend. Um, this morning so far, I've done 74 in sales, so it's a good start to the morning, and it's only 6 in the morning. Um, I've been up since 4.30, so here we go. Um, let's get, I wanted to get my um, shipments done early. People are already asking me, hey, when's my item going to ship out? I think there gets a little bit of confusion when somebody buys something on Friday at 2 in the afternoon. I don't do shipping on the weekends, so... Um, I like to just show things as shipped and I mean it'll go out today so anyway let's get to it let's see how organized I am it's been a while since I've pulled um, for the sake of, of a video so I try to do it in order we'll see how out of order or in order I've gotten um, so I sold this I ended up sending this to auction because it was up for quite a while with no sale it's a new with tags um, Ann Taylor Loft. It's this, it's this sheer racerback um, dress. So it's simple. It's really pretty. I got a lot of watchers and a lot of interest on it, but ultimately it only sold for $9.99 plus shipping. Um, so that's fine. It's out of my store. <laughs> Sometimes it just has to be that way. Um, Royal Robins is a very consistent brand that sells for me. It's not a high dollar brand, but it's consistent. Sold this skort, this women's skort for $14.25 with free shipping. Sold a Champion C9 Racerback bra. Nothing too exciting. And it putting this up on auction at $3.99. Uh, sold at $3.99 plus shipping. So $6 is what that sold for. 
So some of this stuff, you're going to see some of my auction closes here. And like I said in my last haul video, my auctions haven't been closing very high. So um, this is a Jelly the Pug kids dress. Um, this is one of the like five brands of kids clothes that I actually bother to pick up and sell. Um, so this sold on auction for $9.50 plus shipping. So the buyer paid a total of $13.25 for this dress. I sold these Rock Revival jeans, first pair of Rock Revivals I've picked up and I found these at the bin. So they cost me about a dollar, maybe a dollar and a half. Um, there's the tag on the back. And I took a best offer of $20 for these and they paid shipping, so a total of $27. Here is a pair of, these have been in my store probably for a year, honestly, I think that, um, I don't know what took them so long to sell because these are usually go pretty quickly for at least $15. But this time, Nike Dry Fit, fitted shorts, like athletic shorts, these sold for a grand total of $5 opening bid and uh, plus shipping. So $7.84. So it's a good mixture of some lower and medium range dollars that I'm selling here in my store. So pick these up at the Nike outlet. They're a black pair of athletic shorts. Um, Kyrie Irving. I had uh, put a call out for help identifying the logo last week or a couple weeks ago on my Instagram page. Um, sold these for $40. So these were a great pickup. I pick, picked up seven pairs of these at the Nike outlet and I paid $6 a pair for these. So... I'm super happy with that return. I love it when I can do retail arbitrage um, and the Nike outlet and Disney store are pretty much the only place that I do that at for the most part. Um, but it's nice because I got seven pairs. They're all the same size. It was really quick and easy to list. And if they sell for 40 bucks a pop, that's a pretty great profit. I'm very happy with that. And that was free shipping. Um, sold these Nike golf shorts. I picked these up um, at the Salvation Army. Paid um, 69 cents for these on 69 cent tag day and they sold for $12 free shipping. I took a best offer on those. Here was another sweater. This was in my store for a long time too. Um, it's, it's scotch and soda. It's a wool, women's wool sweater. Here's the brand. I love this brand. And you know, it's just really hit and miss because I think I paid $7 for this sweater at a um, retail thrift and it only sold for $9. It was in my store for a long time. I took a best offer of $9, but the buyer is international, so they paid a total of $26.50 for this item. So, I don't know. I probably could have held out on this to get more for it, but um, when I got that offer, I just said, okay, let's just take it and give it up. Sometimes you just have to make your money back if stuff is sitting for that long, because that really, I think that was in my store for well over six months, so. So this brand isn't doing as well for me um, as it is either for other sellers or as it used to, and I'm not quite sure, maybe the trend is falling off, maybe I'm just not picking up the right pieces, but it's 41 Hawthorne. Um, it's a Stitch Fix brand. I did not label this as Stitch Fix because I don't know if this was actually, like, came from Stitch Fix, um, but I sold this for $8 free shipping. I took a best offer on this one. So it's just a blouse. I mean, it's really pretty. I probably paid up for this though. I think I paid like five or six dollars for this. So again, not not really any profit on that piece. But um, for I've got a lot of 41 Hawthorne that's just sitting in my store. And again, I don't know if it's, I mean, but I've sold 41 Hawthorne for 25 to 35 dollars before, depending on the piece. But I have a few pieces that are really just sitting with no interest in my store right now. I'm just gonna say, I have my allergies are killing me right now. So if I start sneezing, I'm really sorry. I'll try to keep it at bay. I didn't used to have allergies, but over the last two years, I feel like I've really just developed like seasonal like hay fever and it's really obnoxious. My husband has always had it. So now I know, now I know what he's been dealing with his whole life. Okay. So picked up this Victoria's Secret. I'm just showing you the back because that's really where all the action is. Um, it's a Victoria's Secret hoodie. These sell really consistently for me. I never know the price point though. Honestly, I can auction these and they'll sell for 30 bucks and I can put it up for buy it now and it won't sell for 20. But this one sold for 17. I did take um, a best offer of 17 plus shipping on this because it's going to go priority. So they paid a total of $24.20 for that item. So I hit a string of Victoria 
Beckham for Target pieces at a retail Goodwill. I paid $10 a piece for them. Uh, looking back, I'm not sure that I would make that decision again because they were selling really well and then now they're not. However, this item after a while in my store did sell for $34. So it's like the pink, uh, I don't know how you say it, Jacquard um, ship dress. It's like a sleeveless dress. It's really, really pretty. I've heard that the sizing is off on these. So if you list Victoria Beckham for Target, make sure you're giving dimensions. Uh, because I feel like that's just been the biggest market complaint about this line when it came out is that the sizing isn't accurate. So make sure you're putting dimensions on any Victoria Beckham for Target pieces that you're putting up. So buyer paid $34.99 on this and paid shipping. Um, even though it's not priority, I must have just not marked free shipping. So they paid $38.28. So still a good flip. Um, on that piece, but I've got like three other Victoria Beckham pieces. I've only sold two of them um, out of all of them that I purchased, but uh, maybe they're just going to be a slow mover. Here's another item that I had actually picked up at um, a Nike outlet a couple months ago. They are um, just socks, and I got them, so they're marked the price tag. They retail for $18 a pair. These are the Nike Elite women's men's basketball socks. They're like an ankle sock, and they retail for 18, they were priced down to $3 a pair and then I got 30% off. So, um, I'm terrible at math. So I paid like $2 ish a pair for these and I've been selling them for about 10 bucks a pair very slowly. So not like my kind of margin, profit margin, honestly, when I'm used to buying stuff at the bins, it's not a great profit margin for me, but you know, whatever. I actually think I might pull a few pairs out for myself. Cause I like them. I'm like, Hey, you know what? They're not selling super fast. They're not flying off my shelf for high dollars. So I love Nike socks. So I'll probably just pull a pair out for myself. Anyway, those sold best offer for $9. All right. This is a cool item. I love these kind of flips, honestly, because I totally took a chance on this. So it's a satin jacket. Satin jackets always catch my eye in the bins and it's in perfect condition. So it's vintage. It's got this hummingbird embroidery on the back, or I guess it's not really, no, it's embroidery. It's like an applique. Um, it's in great condition, super vintage, super cool. It reminds me of like the pink ladies from Greece. Uh, West wind is the brand. I don't think the brand really matters more than the style in this case. I have this up for like 60 bucks at some point sold for 40% off. Um, cause I have like a, a, a large amount of items in my store that I'm trying to move for 40% off. So this was in my store for a few months, but it sold at the 40% off price for $39 plus shipping. So the buyer paid $46.19 for this. So I'm very happy with this flip. I paid less than a dollar at the bins. Um, whenever I find satin jackets, they're always worth looking at. They're not all worth something, but they're always worth looking at. I've had my eye on maternity pieces lately because of my bestie who's pregnant so i've been buying a lot of stuff for her but this was a maternity piece that wasn't her size so it's just liz Lang for target i don't normally pick this up um but maybe i'll start because it's been pretty consistently selling for me i sold this for 15 dollars and 29 cents um so for bins prices i paid probably 50 cents for that so that's a great return on investment i always get concerned when i sell seasonal items after the season is over um because this Fourth of July Koi Scrub sold on July 1st. There's no way this item is going to get to them by tomorrow. Um, so hopefully that's not going to be a problem. They didn't say anything like, hey, can you rush this or get this to me by Tuesday? Uh, but they sold, uh, this sold for $12.74. So I priced it kind of low because I only got it up in my store like a week and a half before the holiday. So I knew that I just wanted to get it out of my store quickly because it's seasonal. I mean, not like, not like somebody can't wear a stars and stripes, um, scrub top in August, but there it is. I just always get a little concerned. Like, Oh, I hope they're not going to expect me to get this to them by the holiday. So this is another item that was in my store for quite a while. It's Ann Taylor and it's a silk blouse. Did not sell for much. Sold this on my 40% off sale for $7 and 79 cents. Free shipping. Moving right along. I always, always, always pick up Under Armour hoodies. They sell 
the best out of all Under Armour products, their hoodies still sell very consistently for me. So this is a, this is a youth hoodie, a girl's hoodie. Um, and it has like a fabric pull on the sleeve. And I mentioned that already in my listing. So they knew what they were getting. This sold for $17 free shipping. Just always consistently selling, no matter if it's men's, women's, kids. This was a dress that just completely had me stumped. I had this up on Poshmark and in my eBay store for a very long time. Super cute dress. It's J. Crew, you know, and as we all know, like J. Crew is really hit and miss. Some of their stuff sells for 40 bucks and some of it you can't even move for, for anything. So this was up in Poshmark and in eBay and for a long time. And it finally sold this weekend for $10. I took a $10 best offer because I was excited to actually sell it after it being in my store for such a long time. This, I picked up two of these actually in a bin, right in the same spot. So they came from the same person. One was red and one was blue. So here's a, it's a soft surroundings. It's like a big velvet cowl neck piece. So totally a winter item, but it sold in the summer. So that's great. Um, soft surroundings is one of my favorite brands to pick up. I will pay up for this. I would have paid up to $8 for this piece. It sold for $30 in my store plus shipping, so the buyer paid $37.20. So I, I had taken a best offer for this. And the other one, the red item, had sold a few weeks back for $30 as well. So those were really good pickups at the bins. I mean, they definitely weigh over a pound, so I probably paid about a buck fifty for them. This is a free people sequined shiny little thing. Um, Free People has not been selling as well for me. I think the market is saturated and the hype is on its way out. There are certain Free People pieces that are definitely still worth picking up, um, but I think gone are the days when anything with a Free People tag is going to sell. I will still pick up Free People all day long at the bins, um, but I'm definitely more selective at retail stores what Free People pieces I'm going to be picking up. So um, here's that Free People tag that we all know and love. I'll still always pick it up just because once you get, once you make money off of a brand, you're always drawn to that brand. Sometimes it takes me years to stop picking up a brand when the value has gone down. So this sold for $8 um, plus shipping. So the buyer paid $11.75 for this piece. All right. This... The comps when I picked this up actually were pretty good, and that's why I got it. I got it at the bins. It's like a, a dress. It's a Helly Hansen, like, jersey dress. Here is the tag. Helly Hansen is one of those surprise brands that if you pull comps, it's just, it's pretty consistent depending on style. I mean, normally Helly Hansen has jackets and outerwear. Um, I've never actually seen a dress before uh, until I found this piece. Found it at the bins, less than a dollar. Uh, sold for $17, so not a bad price for that either. I picked these up because they were new with tags and summer was coming. So they're just Morona from Target. Mor the new with tags Morona stuff, it, it's just, it's that consistent lower dollar sale that you can count on for the most part. So I pick up any Morona new with tags pieces. Target um, has a deal with the Goodwill. So basically Goodwill buys out all of their, um, their dead clearance, the stuff that didn't sell. So it's either going to end up at their retail stores or the bins. I see it at both places. I won't pay Goodwill's retail prices for it, but if it's at the bins, I'll always pick it up. These are just some plain, uh, like chambray cotton shorts. Sold these for $10. They cost me maybe 50 cents. Here's another Nike sports bra. These are just super consistent sellers for me. So just the Racerback sports bras. I took a $13 best offer on this. I've sold these anywhere from $10 to $25, depending on style. Here is a just a knit, like a stretch Vince top. I took a best offer of $20 for this piece. Vince is a great brand to pick up, too. If you ever find Vince Cashmere, it's very... Um, like high demand. I've sold a pair of Vince cashmere like pants, drawstring pants with a giant hole in the lake for $20. So don't pass up on Vince. This was another piece I really was surprised that 
took me so long to sell. This was also up in my Poshmark and my eBay store for quite a while with lots of interest and just nobody to pull the plug until this weekend. So it's this pure DKNY. It's a lambskin um, shirt, like lambskin and linen. It's really cute. I'm just really surprised that it didn't sell for more. So I ended up taking a best offer of $12 on this plus shipping. Um, so the buyer paid $19, but I think I had this up in my store for 50 bucks at one point. It just, it was one of those things that you just kind of have to let it go and say, okay, this isn't going to sell for the price that I want. Okay. You guys notice LuLaRoe is on a downward trend. I have noticed that LuLaRoe is on a downward trend. Um, there are some exceptions. Dresses are still pretty popular on eBay. Uh, I just noticed that the LuLaRoe pieces aren't selling as quickly, and I've even been selling some Randy tees for like $8 plus shipping. So um, I'm much more selective about the LuLaRoe that I'm picking up right now. So this is an Irma top. If you're familiar with LuLaRoe, you'll know I love LuLaRoe myself, so I'm pretty familiar with the styles. Um, I picked this up for $10 at a garage sale. It's new with tags. So, um, I don't think I would pay that much again, though. Just this sat for, for about a month and a half in my store. Um, it's a cute pattern, but yeah, I don't know. Dresses, sure, I will pay $10 for a brand new Attack Lularo dress, but I probably would stick to about the $5 price point right now on Lularo pieces. I actually picked up a couple of tops at a retail store yesterday for five bucks a piece, and that's fine. I don't mind paying $5. A piece for LuLaRoe, I'll probably sell them about $25. Did I say that? That one sold for $25. So still made a profit, a good profit, but I'm pretty selective about what I'm going to pay up for. So um, I'm just noticing overall, unless it's like a Disney, like LuLaRoe Disney's on the upswing because it's a newer product in the uh, market, but just be a little more selective about LuLaRoe and what you're going to pay for it. Okay, this is uh, L.L. Bean. I think I said that the other in my haul video the other day, that I am selling L.L. Bean cardigans really well right now. So it's an L.L. Bean, just a plain cardigan sweater. Sold this for $16. So I don't pass up on L.L. Bean really ever anymore uh, at the bins. I will always pick it up. Somebody asked me uh, if I sell Harley Davidson. So here you go, Harley Davidson. I do... It sells pretty well in my store. It's just a white women's blouse uh, button front top. Sold this for $15. So nothing too exciting, but Harley Davidson does consistently sell in my store. So if it, even if it's not in good condition, like Harley t-shirts with holes in them will still sell for something. Uh, and there's really no rhyme or reason. I can't figure it out. So, um, so here's a free people piece. It's actually a we the free piece. Um, it's a cute jacket. It's so, so this brand is also free people. If you don't know, We The Free, it's kind of their, um, I don't want to say lower end, but their lower dollar line. So you want to put uh, We The Free and then people in your title when you find this brand so people can pull it up in their um, listing because it's the same company. It's just a jacket with like a ruffle front. It's super cute, like distressed um, seams. Sold this for $21 free shipping. I've been trying out plus size pieces of all brands lately just to see what brands are selling. So I found this at the bins, probably paid about 75 cents for it. Um, it's GNW plus, so nothing too fancy as far as a brand is concerned. Definitely not a bolo. It's just a maxi skirt, but it's cute. Sold for $5 plus shipping, so the buyer paid $11 for this skirt. So here's another free people piece. See, I'm still selling free people. It's just all over the place. So it's a kind of a chunky cardigan sweater. It's a um, longer length cable knit in the back. Picked this up at the bins just a, like last week though. I just got this up last week. So it sold pretty quickly for $20 plus shipping. So they paid $28 for this item. I picked up two of these at the retail store last week, Retail Goodwill, and I paid $6.99 a piece for these. It's an Eileen Fisher silk, like sheer silk top. Um, and I paid, what did I say, $7 for this? And I sold it for $30. So. And it was on sale for 15% off in my store. 
So um, any of you are, that are familiar with Cabby know that Cabby has an older style tag and they have a newer style tag. The newer style tag, and I don't have an example to show you right now, um, but the newer style tag, pretty much I won't even look up comps for the newer style tag. I'll just pick it up when I find it. I did find this piece at the bins. It's a really unassuming piece and it's their older style tag and it's just a floral tank top. But when I pulled comps on this piece, the comps look fantastic. So I decided, you know, without a question to pick it up. Usually if it's in the bins and it's this older style tag, I'm still going to pick it up if it's in good condition. Um, I have to always look up the style though when I'm at a retail store to decide if it's worth picking up or not. Of course, I cannot find the tag that I want to show you. Here you go. So on the side seam with Cabby, there's just a few brands I do this with. So with Cabby, there's going to be a style number. Let's see if it'll come in here. Nope, it's not even gonna come in. Um, anyway, there's a three digit style number. Sometimes it's four digits, I think. Anyway, if you just go into eBay and you look up Cabby, in this case, 984, you should be able to see comps for their old, for any of their pieces, but really like I always look up comps on their older pieces when I'm at a retail store deciding to buy Cabby or not, and then I'll make a decision at that point. So this blouse sold for $30, so, uh, this was a good, I found, like I said, I found that at the bins anyway, but I would have paid up for that at a retail store. I picked this up at the bins, not really my style of thing that I pick up, but it's like leather and it's a satchel and it's new with tags. And I think it's like an older tag. Let's see, it's Pioneer. Um, and I had this in my store for a while and it sold for $12.74 plus shipping. So the buyer paid $20 for this bag. Again, I got it for the, from the bins. I paid a dollar for it. I picked this up just because it was really good condition, but I probably would not pick up this brand again. Um, it's a tech gear hoodie. It's just a, it's, it's an in style hoodie right now. So I know this is like, I think this is a Kohl's brand tech gear. Um, but I really like this. It's the like heathered purple hoodie. And I feel like this is just a really popular style right now. So somebody out there would be looking for it, but no, not really. So I took a $5 best offer plus shipping. So the buyer paid $12. So I probably wouldn't pick that up again. Again, I got it at the bins. Still made a little bit of money, but not a whole lot. Pick this up at the bins. It's a Patagonia merino wool, long sleeved shirt, anything Patagonia I'm going to pick up at the bins, but it's always a plus when it's merino wool. Uh, it's kind of a faded logo there. I can tell Patagonia just by touching it most of the time. Um, and I certainly can pick out merino wool. I like that athletic merino wool um, when I touch it at the bins. That's why I don't wear gloves at the bins, you guys, because I need to be able to feel quality um, and textures of items. I would say that if I did not, if I wore gloves, I would probably miss out on a lot of things. I just wash my hands really well. Uh, you know, I've been doing this for five years. I've never caught a cootie um, from the bins by not wearing gloves. So I don't eat at the bins. I just feel like I don't put my fingers in my eyes or my mouth or my nose. So, so it's worth not wearing gloves to me to be able to pick up quality. So I sold this for $22 and I, I paid maybe 80 cents for it. All right, here's a brand that I mentioned in my last haul video, Flax. Uh, this has a fun saying on it as well. Flax. The little tag says, I am happy. I am happy. It's just a green skirt. This brand is so unassuming to me, but it is popular and people love it and they are searching for it on eBay. So don't sleep on a flax piece. Uh, $25 was an offer uh, that I took for this free shipping. I love finding flax because I feel like nobody's, nobody unless you're watching reseller videos, because I learned from another reseller about that brand, I would never have picked that brand up um, if I hadn't learned about it from another reseller. Because it's just, to me, it's not, it's not um, my style. So I, I, I don't know, not that I just only pick up stuff that's not my style, I just, I don't, it surprises me that it's so popular. I'm trying to say that in a gentle way. <laughs> Uh, but you know what? I'm not a fashionista, so really, what am I doing selling clothing on eBay? So I've mentioned before my love of these just random silk um, Asian print, um, Asian inspired robes, gowns. I pick them up no matter what. This has no 
brand, uh, like nothing exciting, but it still sold for $15. I think I had this on 40% off in my store. $15 is still great. Sold like paid less than a dollar for it. Happy with that. It's missing a belt. I uh, grabbed this just a couple weeks ago at the bins. It's an Athleta sweater. It's a cardigan, full zip cardigan with a hood. Sold this for $14.50 plus shipping, so they paid $21. Athleta is always a great brand to pick up at the bins. And I think, you guys, that we are down to our last item. Yes. Um, I don't get excited about Carhartt, but it always sells, so I always pick it up. Uh, it doesn't really matter if these are not in good condition, if they have paint or holes, I will still pick them up as long as they're in wearable condition. So as long as like the crotch isn't, you know, torn out or something like that. Um, sometimes Carhartt can be just disgusting in the bins though. I will say that if it's filthy and like caked with mud um, or worn for like a year without being washed, you know what I'm talking about, right? I won't even touch it just because it grosses me out. Um, but these were in really good condition. Shorts, Carhartt logo on the back. Sold these for $20 plus shipping. They went to an international buyer. So somebody uh, paid $38 for these shorts. So that is my 4th of July weekend sales update, you guys. Um, thanks so much for tuning in. I hope everybody else had a great sales weekend. I hope that the next couple of days for the holiday are very busy in your store. I'm really hoping that it will be for me. I still have a 40% off sale running on um, a, a large chunk of items in my store and I'll probably run another sale for the rest of the items in my store just so that I can keep the holidays pretty busy. Hope you guys have fun doing fireworks, barbecues, whatever you guys do for the holiday and I will check in and see you when I see you. Thanks guys for tuning in. Um, oh, of course, leave me a thumbs up if you like this video uh, and leave me a comment or question. I'm happy to answer it for you. Uh, and then come hang out with us over on Instagram. There's a great reselling community over there. If you want to get plugged in, you can find me over there at Thrifting for the Nest. Thanks, you guys. Have an awesome holiday. Bye.